Hello, Mad Cappers. This is just a little bit of an update to a pattern that we already have on our website and in our Etsy store, but I'm going to show you how to make it in this beautiful summer weight fabric, which is actually a quilting fabric. Here I am in the original video that we have on our channel, making it in the fall and wintery fabrics, but hey, it's a terrific hat for spring and summer too. So let's get started. Let me show you how I make our fabulous boho cap in a nice, lightweight, fun, summery, spring-like fabric. No matter what the season, we've included a piece for your lining in the boho pattern set that will be a large round oval, but it's a, it's a not a circle, it's more of an oval shape with the ends of the oval being the front and the back. And what we do is we use a scrap piece of our quilting fabric, something pretty to make that lining. I'm using about a half a yard or half a meter of a quilting fabric and I'll cut two. And I've got a small piece of heavier cotton twill that I'll use for underneath my visor. And I'm using this lovely, fun, artsy bird print that I got from Spoonflower in a lightweight cotton. It's quilting weight cotton, a little bit heavier, but it's about a four or five ounce cotton. And what I love about Spoonflower is you can support artists all around the world by buying their artwork on these all sorts of different weights of fabric. So with my cottons I like to give them a good steaming a good pressing before I cut just giving it a bit of a pre-shrinking heat treatment and I'll do the same thing on my piece of cotton twill and there is my visor template I'm using the size medium which is the average woman's head size that I've cut from my pattern package And a medium is a head size of about 22 and a half inches or 57 and a half centimeters going around the head just above your eyebrows and just above your ears. Now in the summer weight fabrics we're going to fuse every piece that's on the outside of our cap with a medium weight one-sided fusible interfacing and I like to cut all the pieces all at once. If you are new to the channel you'll see on other videos that I do this. And so I've got it layered so that the sticky part of my fusible interface is on the wrong side of both of my, my fabrics. And I'm just going to add an extra little piece of sew-in interfacing uh, just to give the visor a little bit more strength. But you don't have to do that. The medium weight fuse is good for all the pieces and I'm going to just make sure that the fuse is tucked behind my fabric so I don't get any on the iron but it's in a large enough area that it's going to cover my pieces once I've cut the pieces out and I'm just following the manufacturer's instructions and I'm applying the heat and I'll turn it over and apply it on the back side too and I've got my handy dandy monster pressing mat which helps to push that heat in from behind from the top of my iron as well. I love my pressing mat and there is a link for a pressing mat like mine in the description for this video below in case you don't have one yet I highly recommend. Now I'm going to put my right sides together and I'll put that extra piece of um, it's just the regular heavyweight sew-in interfacing stabilizer and I'll pin all the layers together and I will cut out my visor. And you can see that my fusible interfacing is adhered to the wrong side of both my outside fabrics and I'm ready to sew that visor but I'm going to finish cutting and for the pieces that I use a lot like the top piece for this boho cap I'm going to attach my pattern piece to a piece of heavier poster board or bristol board so that I can make a pattern template that I can just trace around in the future and I don't need to pin every time. So this cap requires eight pieces of that top section for the outside layer and you can do the lining on the inside instead of using the large oval that comes with your pattern package you can just replicate these pieces on the inside with something pretty. A cotton layer of quilting cotton but not 
um, stabilized so you don't need to add the fuse on the on the back of your lining and you could just cut 16 pieces of this out if you'd like but make sure that your eight pieces are, that are for the outside of your boho cap have that medium weight one-sided fusible stabilizer ironed onto the back and I'm just doing the same thing as I did with the visor I'm just putting the stabilizer on before I cut the pieces you can do it however it's easier for you if you just want to cut out the stabilizer and cut out the pieces and then add them after that's fine but I like to cut everything out at the same time so all the pieces match perfectly and I'll usually if I'm cutting out by hand I'll cut two at a time and here's another piece of this fabric the beautiful artsy birds enough to cut the remaining six pieces out and I am just going to trace the outline of my pattern onto the back on the wrong side of my outside layers of my top of my boho cap I'm using my yellow wax pencil which is easy to see and when I'm finished I'll put a pin in the center of each set so there's they're actually right sides together so I'm cutting two out at a time and I will pin those twos together So when I'm finished cutting, I'll have four sets of two top pieces and each will have a pin in the center just holding them. And I like to pin before I cut, so once again I'm cutting the pieces the same size. And just a reminder that your pattern pieces have a built-in seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter, but you'll see that there's a little shadow around each of the sized pieces in your pattern package and that shadow will give you the opportunity to cut those pieces larger if you need a larger seam allowance. So say for example you are used to working with a seam allowance of a half an inch then cut to the outside of that shadow. Now it's time to get sewing. So right sides are together on my top pieces and I'm going to start sewing my top together and I'm just going up one edge of each set of two right up to that point and when I'm finished doing those four sets I'm going to top stitch on either side of that seam so that on the inside that seam is lying flat and we did the same thing on the earlier version of the boho cap that uh, we did with the fall uh, and winter weight fabrics but in the summer we also do this top stitching and it's lovely if you use a thread that's the same color as your main body um, color then you won't really notice it but if you are very skilled at top stitching then you could use a fun uh, contrast color of thread to make those top stitches more noticeable and I like to use the medium weight fusible interfacing on these lighter weight uh, cotton hats for summer because it's sort of like using a hat block. You get the um, benefit of having a hat that has a shape to it and a shape that's fairly sturdy. So rather than blocking a hat um, that a lot of milliners do with straw and felt, you're sort of creating a three-dimensional shape with your skill on the sewing machine and your skill with the scissors when you're cutting out the pieces. And I find that the best way to enhance my skill is to use my magnetic seam measure, which I don't use for this top stitching stage, but definitely when I'm sewing along the edges of, of, of the cut for my pattern pieces, that magnetic seam measure really helps me do a consistent seam consistent seam width. So I'm just finishing up with my top stitching. I have sewed the sets together now. I have two panels with four panels each and now I'm going to just attach the two together right sides matching up that point at the top and my edges at the bottom and I'll use my regular seam width to sew those two sections together with one long joining seam going up one side panel across the top and down to the back, back to the bottom edge on another. And here we go. We are almost finished the top section of our hat. 
and I'll just finish it off with that final top stitch on that long seam. And there you go. Lovely. So much fun, these birds. On my website, I call it the artsy birds. So well, now we'll put our visor together. And I've got all my layers there. I've got my my loose layer of the heavyweight uh, inner sew-in stabilizer that wasn't fused on the very top. And then my top layer of my visor is underneath that. So I'm working from the top of my visor and I've gone around with my 3 8 or one centimeter wide seam. And now you can clip along to just ease in that curve. I just like to finish that edge with my serger and it gives me a nice edge to roll on because I'm gonna turn it right side out and I'm gonna work that edge so that I have a beautiful shaped curved visor. And I push that edge, that seam edge, right out to the very edge of my visor. So basically I would have the same amount of that pretty printed fun bird fabric on one side of the visor and the same amount of fabric on the other side on the plain color of the beige twill. And I'll just use my clips to hold that edge in place. And now I'm just going to top stitch a little decorative. You could do a double uh, row if you'd like. I just do a single, but it's a preference that you can choose. And once again, you can see my handy magnetic seam guide is doing the job for me. And I'll just close up that open edge along the inside curve of my visor. I'm going to trim off those points at the end. And I'll cut a center notch at the middle of my visor, a center front notch. All done, a beautiful visor. And now we're going to attach the visor to the band section of our hat. Now this is a two-piece band. It has a curve, so it comes in a little bit just to enhance that puffiness of the top. And then at the back, there's a little insert that has some elastic that will help make a very comfortable fit. For my boho cap in the size medium, I'm using a seven inch or 18 centimeter long piece of one inch uh, wide or 26 millimeter wide elastic in the back of my boho cap. And it has a separate little casing that we will attach once we finish putting our visor onto the front section of the cap. Now in the winter version of this hat, I would use some maybe different colored fabric in this front outside piece that has the curve. You can just do a solid color if you wanted to add some pizzazz and maybe sew a couple of buttons on to make it really look spectacular. I just love this fabric, so I'm just gonna make my hat all in this solid colored birds, except for the underside of the visor, which is that beige twill. And I like to start when I'm sewing on these curved pieces in the center, matching the center notches, and then I flip it over once I've gone to one edge and do the other edge the same way, working from the center to the outside edge. And I'm gonna trim with some clips, just clipping all the way around into that fuse, just to help with easing in the next piece, just to make it have a little bit more give to it when I'm trying to get around these corners and I'll do some clips into the piece that I'm gonna sew on next, which is the same as the outside piece, but this one will be on the inside of our cap, lying next to our forehead. And once again, I'm starting in the middle at that center notch point, and I'll be using my 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter wide seam width. And I'm just taking my time and I'm straightening out that bottom piece as I go, hoping that I'm not causing any tucking or folding, but I will check afterwards to make sure. And if I do, then I'll just take it out with my seam ripper and do it again. But so far, so good, folks. And I'm using my magnetic measure again, and that's helping me hold everything together. 
So now we have our visor attached to the front section of our band. We have a definite, definite seam up the middle, but the piece that we're gonna cut for our elastic casing is one piece and we'll fold it in half. And I'm just gonna get rid of those edges that are popping out on either side of the visor. They would be safely inside the seam, but just for comfort's sake, we will remove that extra bulk. You're looking at the wrong side, now the top side of our visor band. And now back onto our beautiful monster wool pressing mat. We'll give our elastic casing piece a nice steam and a press. And now we're gonna cut out our pattern. And I made a mistake at the beginning of the video. I do not put fuse on the piece that is the elastic casing. I think I said to put it on all the outside parts. Now you could if you want to, but I find a nice loose uh, elastic band at the back is more comfortable than one that is stiff. So folks, no fuse on the back of this outside piece. And you can see that dotted line. It's going to be folded in the middle there. I'll just finger fold it so I can see where that bottom edge is because that fold will be the bottom edge. And I'll want to put my elastic at a point in that casing where it's close, close to the bottom edge, but not going to be folded. And I almost forgot to cut the center notches on my elastic casing. That's important because it's going to be all gathered up with elastic when we close up that top part of the casing. So make sure you don't forget. Right sides together with that seam open up underneath. We're going to sew those two pieces together. We're going to sew over it and we'll sew those two edges together. Right sides together. You can see I'm making a fold with my fingers just so I can see where that elastic should sit on the casing. So not on top of that fold, but just down towards the bottom of the, the cap on the back side if possible. And I'll give it some back and forth. And now I'm just gonna sew with the elastic facing towards the other side of the casing and I'll just give it a top stitch to sew that seam flat. So my seam is underneath my top stitch. And now I'm going to bring the other edge, the open edge of the casing over to the other side of the front of the band, but across the front of the band. So my visor is underneath all of that. And I will sew again the right sides together using my regular seam width of 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter and keeping that seam from the front part of my band where those two pieces, the front and the inside, join flat and open underneath. And now I'm going to attach the other end of my elastic in approximately the same place on the band as it is on the other side. And now you can see how it stretches across sort of folds up over top of itself across that elastic casing part of our band. And now I'm gonna close up that open seam all the way around before I attach it to the top of our hat and I'll match up the center front notch. And this is the tricky part. So we were glad that we put that notch in at the back because it's all gathered now. And I'll also match up those side seams as well and just pin or clip away from where I'm gonna sew just to hold them in place as I go around with the sewing machine close to the edge, about a quarter of an inch or seven millimeters or six millimeters. Another pin. And now I'll just pull that open as best I can to match those two notches on either side of that open elastic casing and I want to make sure that my elastic is is close to the bottom of that casing so I don't sew on top of it because we want it to be nice and stretchy inside that casing so usually I put a pin and I've got I go right through the elastic to hold it in place and now I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna sew that opening closed all the way around
and this beautiful bird boho cap is really starting to take shape now. And I just sort of pull on the part where the elastic casing is just to make that those two pieces of fabric flat as I sew over top. Now is the time to decide whether you want a seam at the very front center of your cap and at the uh, center back of your cap, or if you want to make a, the middle of a panel, the center front and the center back. So I'm going to cut a notch in the middle of one of my panels and that will mark either the center front or the center back. And on the exact opposite side of my top section, I'm going to cut a matching notch. So it's a personal choice. I know a lot of caps in the industry use the seam of a panel for the center front and center back, but it's an even number, so you get a choice and you can decide. So I'm matching up my two notches and then I'm just going to ease in the rest all the way around. And as I go past that part of the cap that has the stretchy section of the band, I'm going to try to pull that stretchy section so that it's nice and flat underneath my presser foot. And the two pieces should go together very seamlessly and perfectly. So all the way around, I'm going to use my regular seam width of 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter and attach those two pieces together. And my right sides are together as well. And I'm just going to check my work. And I've got the beginning of a cap, a finished cap. And so now I'm using my big um, wide oval that I've cut for my lining and I've changed the foot on my sewing machine to be a gathering foot and I'm going to start at one of the notches and I'm going to gather all the way around and I like to put my finger behind the foot just to help with that gathering it makes a tighter gather and if you have a loose gather that's not a little bit bigger and fit than the opening for your cap you just sort of work it in, work in those gathers to, to um, make it fit. And if it's too tight of a gather, then you can just break the seam in a few places so you can stretch it out a little. And you can certainly gather by hand as well with a needle and thread. There's lots of flexibility by doing it this way. And so I've got my wrong sides together. So I'm looking at the outside of my lining and I'm just working it in all the way around. And now I'm gonna sew it onto the whole hat assembly. And I'm sewing more or less on top of that seam that I already made joining the visor section and the top section together. And to finish it off, I'm just gonna go around that edge with my serger just to clean up any of the raw edges. You can use a zigzag stitch. You can trim with your pinking shears. Or if it's a hat for you, you don't have to do anything more than just enjoy your lovely new summer boho cap. Isn't that fabulous? So I hope this helps you make better use of the pattern package. And we will see you again soon with a brand new hat for you to make and love and enjoy. And we appreciate all of your support and your thanks. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Enjoy our patterns. They're all tested and tried and true after 36 years of business. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.